Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Both Barrels. I am Burn. This is my father, Curtis. What do we have today? Gin. Gin, all right. We have a couple, well, a few different gins, actually. Um, you want to tell us about some of these? We have uh, my three favorite gins. Mm -hmm. Hendrix. Okay, Hendrix. Classic, right? Classic, yep. yep. And of course we have yep. the Botanical. Yep, the Botanist. Botanist. Is this what it's called. Botanist, sorry. Yeah. And then something unusual that a lot of our viewers may not know about, is particularly because it is not even available in Iowa anymore. It's I, it's hard to come by in Iowa. Yeah. yeah. It actually is from York County, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And I think this is one of the most wonderful gins I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Death's Door. Death's Door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For people who are more familiar with whiskey, what can you tell us about gin and the process that's used and the materials used? Very little. Okay. Honestly. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's pretty much a vodka that has um, uh, all sorts of things like wonderful juniper, berry, juniper berries and all sorts of wonderful things added to it during its period where it, it sits. Yeah. It, it has this wonderful flavor. Yeah. So let's start start with the Hendrix. <laughs> okay. And taste them. And these are very similar gins, but that's okay. kind of gin alike. Okay. Okay, so Hendrix first. Okay. And from here I can already smell all of the Oh yeah, it's just yeah. wonderful. Mm. It smells like Christmas. Yeah, it really does, actually. And it's um let's see. Yeah, oh, that's very refreshing. Yeah. Lots and lots of wonderful spice. I, I, you know, a lot of people told me they don't like gin, and I don't understand why. Now, yeah, it, it doesn't seem as popular as some of the other stuff that's been going around recently, like whiskey and rye, rye whiskey seems to be growing in popularity. Rum is getting very big again. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first one. Mm -hmm. There's a sweetness in, 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 after you swallow that's really nice with that. Yeah. 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 So shall we try Death's Door next? Death's Door next. Okay. And typically people mix their gins with, well, tonic and other stuff as well. Well, and, and after we taste it all three, we'll decide which one we want to make the perfect martini of. Okay. Now, this one doesn't have quite as much of a bouquet. Yeah, it's a lot milder than the other mm -hmm. one. But the taste is really, really intense. And it, it really fills your entire palate. Yeah. Not, I... not as sweet. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of nice. Yeah, it, it dries out really, really quickly. Yes, it does. It, it, but I just think this is a remarkable gin, and considering it's made in the United States and it's made okay, no, in no, Death's, no, no. you know, Death's Doors is from Door County. Right. Right. I mean, that just really, it, it really boggled my mind. The first time I tasted this was at, at a tasting, and I was like, wow, that is just fabulous gin. Mm hmm. If you get an opportunity to try that gin, you need to. Yeah. I notice uh, there's lots of condensation on these bottles. We uh, had these in the fridge earlier, didn't we? Well, yeah, I, I like to serve it cold, but I don't like to dilute it with ice. I don't like to dilute anything with ice. Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually keep them in the freezer so they're nice and nice chilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we just had this one, and the uh, gentleman at John's Groceries. DJ at John Groceries. Yep. He's, he recommended this. Yep, he introduced this to us. We uh, tried a little bit of it while we were there and haven't had it ever since. It'll be nice to try it and compare it with the others. DJ is very smart, very helpful. He really has good taste. Yeah, if you have questions about gin, he's, he'd probably be a better resource than we will. This one, um, the Hendrix up front seemed way more intense, but the Death Store, like, at first it was milder, and then it got just exploded In once the nose, it left. The Hendrix is really, really gets to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just really jumps into you. Right. But the taste, the palate on the test door, that's where the excitement comes. Yep. Yep. So, we'll try out this last one. We'll try to and again, it. this one doesn't have the nose that mm -hmm. the Hendrix has, but it has a sweetness and it has a balance mm -hmm. that is just wonderful for the entire, the entire experience. From the moment you smell it, to you go into your mouth, to you swallow it, mm -hmm. and then linger afterwards, mm -hmm. it's all wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, between these three, um, which one do we think would be best for mixing? For making a martini? Yeah. Uh, my m kind of martini? Uh, sure, why not? I think I'm gonna stick with the... Stick with this guy? Yeah. For years and years and years, I went to a bar called the Why Not. Believe it or not, it was actually called the Why Not. Huh. And uh, uh, the bartender there 
April, lovely woman, she would make me martinis the way I like martinis. All right. Usually I would drink cognac there because they got a bottle of cognac for me and they just set it up there. And I was the only one that drank it, but I came in and I ordered a martini and I would sit there and I'd sniff and drink the martini for an hour. Mm -hmm. Shot for an hour, maybe two in an evening. Mm -hmm. My friends were falling over drunk with 22 rum and cokes. <laughs> playing foosball right and I was just enjoying the the people that I was with and talking and, mm -hmm. and having a good time and I convinced her to make a martini the way I like a martini yeah and how's that well pour the gin in the glass yeah okay you put in two olives all right two olives two olives like that you stir them around get that olive flavor in there with all that wonderful juniper mm -hmm. okay and then you think somewhere in Iowa, mm -hmm. someone has opened a bottle of vermouth. Yeah. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> Just, if it's 20 miles away, it might be too close. All right. Okay. So I, I know it's not a traditional martini, but it's the way I like it. Mm -hmm. So the olives and mm, the gin mm -hmm. together. All you need. I don't think you need. I don't think you need the vermouth in there to make it really wonderful. No. So it's really not a martini, but it's the way I like my martini. Yeah. So it seems like we like this guy a lot for mixing, even though it's uh, it's, it's wonderful it's for just balanced drinking. on its own. It's it's yeah. very good on its own. Um, the intensity <laughs> of the, the 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 smell in your nose for this. Yep. And then the taste. Yep. And the sweetness. Yep. The uh, the nose on this is really really good. This one here. Again, it doesn't have that intense nose, but it has an incredible impact on your palate. Yes. And you swallow it, and it lingers, and it's wonderful. All right. Any other thoughts you want to add here? Wish I knew more about gin. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so if you have any questions about gin, don't ask because I don't know, and I'm not going to figure it out. Yeah, consult Wikipedia. All right. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, leave us a comment. Um, we won't probably answer any of your questions, but thanks. Bye.